inside this box is the latest MacBook M3 Max model. Let's take a look inside. That was not as satisfying as I thought it would be. Oh my God. <laughs> So this is the 16 inch MacBook Pro M3 Max model with 64 gigabytes of RAM. I've never owned a MacBook before, so I'm quite curious to see what a MacBook is actually like. Very nice unboxing experience so far. And then I'm assuming we just open it up. Oh my God. All right, pull it up like this. I don't wanna break it. Oh, wow. This is much lighter than a lot of the gaming laptops that I've owned in the past. It comes with a really nice black braided charging cable the usual Apple leaflet with some stickers inside, as well as the charging items. And I actually think that's it, wow. Okay, let's move on to the MacBook itself. There's something so satisfying about this. Wow. Oof. A lot of YouTubers are talking about the finger resistant material that they use, and it's very hard to describe, but when you have it in your hands, it kind of makes sense. It looks metallic, but it's very smooth to the touch, to the point where it's hard to leave any smudges. On the logo, I mean, it's pretty easy. And again, it's not that heavy. All right, let's open it up. Oof, okay. <laughs> it comes with a protector as well. Oh, should I buy a screen protector? I probably should, right? No, you shouldn't because it will crack. Yeah, okay, never mind. Uh, I'm gonna peel off. I'm so glad I bought the 16 inch version, honestly. The screen is ridiculous. I haven't seen a screen this clear on a laptop. Is the mouse working? Oh, the mouse pad is huge as well. That's crazy. The screen real estate is ridiculous. It is just so big. I can't wait to edit on this thing. So while I'm setting up the MacBook, the one thing that I noticed about the keyboard is that it's actually kind of satisfying to type on. It won't beat a mechanical keyboard, but for a laptop keyboard, it's probably one of the best I've tried. Touch ID. Oh my God, there's touch ID on this laptop. I didn't even know that. Okay, sure. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll use my finger. It already has all my cards saved. Oh my God, okay, I can, I can, I'll do this later, I'll do this later. I will put my debit cards later. Oh my God, dark mode, please. This feels very reminiscent of one of the older charging cables. And I thought we'd just be charging with USB-C, but I don't know if this is faster or slower. I also want to try out the speakers. So I'm gonna play a song on my iPhone at full volume and then compare it to the MacBook. All right, and this is the same song on the MacBook. That's pretty good. <laughs> so on this MacBook Pro, we have two USB-C ports, an AUX port, a HDMI port, another USB-C port, and my personal favorite one, an SD card port. So I can finally just insert an SD card into the laptop directly, and I don't have to use one of these anymore. But it is a bit of a bummer that all of these are USB-C ports because that means I have to get converters for anything that's USB-A, which is not great. One thing I am kind of scared about is that MacBooks are apparently really fragile. So if you guys have any recommendations for things I should look out for or anything I should buy to take care of the MacBook, please let me know. All right, so today we have seven hours of volleyball, three of them being practice and four of them being games with a bunch of friends. So let's pack up with our trusty Under Armour bag. First off, we got my all-time favorite Way of Wade 10 shoes in white. I'm gonna bring a tank top, a sports tee, and another pair of Under Armour shorts. And you also can't forget the essential towel. In Malaysia, it gets very hot and humid, so it's really important that you bring spare clothes and a towel so you can wipe off your sweat. And of course, we're also gonna be bringing my all-time favorite over water bottle. All right, never really done this before, but I'll try to commentate over this game of volleyball. Uh, this is just casual between friends, so it's not really like a tournament or anything, just casual. And in the warm-up, you can already see that I'm not doing my best. I jump too early and under the ball. These are bad habits that I always do. But at this point, pretty good. Good receive, a back set, managed to hit it into his hands, and it was a block out, so pretty happy with that. This was a bit embarrassing. I overpassed, and then we just lost the point. <laughs> uh, here, I couldn't really hit the ball. It was a bit close, so I just decided to tip. And for this one, it's just a funny point. Uh, she kicked the ball out. <laughs> and me and my friend just looked at the camera. Uh, here, I also had to tip. The set was a bit close to the net, but he passed it back, which I wasn't expecting. And I managed to get a really good hit in. Here, the ball's flying out and I managed to pick it up. And a really nice hit from my friend Melvin. Great play. My friend Laren was also very hyped up. <laughs> And so on to the next game. So it was a funny pickup. <laughs> My friend tried to kick it back into the other court, but failed miserably. 
And here it started the really bad streak of hits. I just wasn't getting my timing down. I wasn't sort of whipping my wrist over. And I just couldn't get a good hold of the ball. I was distracted there. I didn't manage to receive the tip. And even here you can see my contact was just off. It was just like small little mistakes that compounded into my hits not connecting. And here you can see I just completely lost it. Like my contact was so bad. Anyways, moving on from me being an absolute failure, I managed to get a decent pick up here and we put the ball onto the other side and he somehow managed to keep the ball in play and we got this amazing moment on camera. Shout out to Jordan, honestly, he's such a humble dude. He helps to organize all these sessions. You can see he had to take a seat to just process what happened. <laughs> And so we took a break for a little bit and for some reason I started getting my momentum back. You can see here, it was a great back set. I was able to hit it straight down. It wasn't a perfect hit, but it was much better than my previous attempts. And this was another really nice point. Great receive, a back set, and I was able to get a block out. And for some reason, I don't know, I just felt more confident about the timing and the back sets. Everything just felt better. And after that, out of nowhere, my friend Allison just pulls out a crazy jump serve ace. This point was a huge surprise for me. I got a bad receive. I didn't think I was going to get a back set, but he trusted me anyways. And I got an insane pipe. I don't know if it was actually going in, but it was a block out. And I was really happy with that. And this was also the game winning point. So it was a really nice way to end the day. So today's game started off really well. And then I just sort of lost my momentum and my timing, but I managed to get it back at the end of the day. So recently I made an Instagram reel that absolutely blew up. It has like 6 million views or something. And it's just about me and my friends fooling around at volleyball and it's just been kind of blowing up on my Instagram page. But yeah, I've kind of realized that I want to shift a bit more again. I've made like three shifts in total with my YouTube channel. I started with Team Fortress 2 when I was like 16, 17. Then I moved on to keyboards during the pandemic. And now I think the end game for me with content would definitely be like lifestyle or like vlogs or just make the channel about me. Like sort of like a Casey Neistat vibe. But I definitely want to include more volleyball content. I'm working on like a mini documentary, not really a documentary, but like a two, three year progress video where I talk about how I started volleyball, the challenges I faced, what I've learned, all that kind of stuff. But at this point in time, I've definitely kind of like stagnated. I'm not really improving that much, nor am I getting worse. I'm definitely a bit frustrated that I'm just not getting the results that I was hoping for. And I think that's mainly due to work because I don't have as much time to train or go to the gym. But yeah, I definitely feel like just a bit disappointed in myself that I haven't been getting that much better because I really want to be good at volleyball. It's just a super fun sport and the friends I've made along the way are incredible. But I just can't help but get that feeling that I can be so much better. And I know I can. I just need to put the work in and stop complaining like I am right now. <laughs> But yeah, if you guys are interested in more volleyball content on this channel, please comment down below. I definitely want to make some. I just don't know if people really want to see that. So some of you may know I am currently on my placement here. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a 9 to 12 month contract where you stop going to uni, you work for a year to gain experience, and then you go back for your final year of your degree. I'm currently a full-time media planner. I don't think I'm allowed to disclose which companies or clients that I'm working for. But it's really stressful because there are deadlines and I'm currently like a one-man team. So that's the main reason why I haven't been uploading to this YouTube channel as much. And when I do upload, the quality is not as high as I would like it to be. And if it is, the video takes way too long to make and I'm already late to the trend as you saw in the Lethal Company video. So today I am going to be working from home and I wanted to bring you guys through a day in the life of a media planner or just my life in general and you guys can take a look at how busy it really gets. So for today, it was a lot of creative work for me because my clients had a lot of campaigns that they wanted to go live during Ramadan and Raya. And so today was just a lot of meetings, talking to the clients and lining up on their vision and what I put in the proposal. This can either be really easy if the client trusts you and trusts your vision and just goes along with what you pitch. Uh, sometimes it can be really tough if the client is very specific and picky and so you have to end up pitching a lot of things. Thankfully, my clients trust me for most of my proposals. So the process for me was actually really easy today. It is now 4.30 p.m. and as you can probably hear behind me, it is raining pretty heavily. I've done pretty much all my work for today and at this point in time it's quite late so clients usually stop replying and that's when you just start wrapping things up and sorting anything out that you need to do or getting things ready for the next day. And I also have a concert in a few hours so I do want to get dressed for that. So today we're going to be seeing Grant Perez live. I've been a big fan of his stuff even before he started making original music. I just sort of listened to him on the side and to see him grow this much and now perform in my country 
is pretty wild. So my outfits are usually monochromatic and they can be a bit formal, but since I'm going to a concert, I want something a bit more casual and chill. So I'm going to start off with some oversized jeans from the new Uniqlo C collection. Not only is it really comfortable, it also cuts off really nicely at the bottom of my foot. The length is perfect. It's not too oversized and I really like how it just flows straight down. I'm also going to add a belt just for a little bit more detail and my Toji Fushiguro necklace. I really enjoyed the concert. Gren Perez is super charismatic and live. I wasn't expecting him to be that good or have like that much of a stage presence, but he did a really good job. I think the part that surprised me the most was how hot the venue was. It's like 200 people in this really tight space and I really regret it bringing the Kaha jacket. It was just way too warm. And the worst part is that we weren't even allowed to bring our own water into the venue. So we just had to go to the expensive bar and buy an expensive drink, which I'm sure is a whole strategy thing, but just kind of annoying. I think the craziest part is that he's my age. During the concert, he said that he's 22 and that made me feel super proud of him because he did work really hard to get to that point in time. But it also made me feel super guilty for not achieving that same level of success. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but at the age of 22, I'm not sure if I've achieved as much as him. And it made me not only want to work harder, but also like a little bit insecure about the person I am as a whole. I don't know if I'm deeping it, maybe some of you guys have experienced something similar. The concert was great, just definitely felt like, oh god, I need to work harder. 